You know how you can tell the case of the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago is serious? Donald Trump isn't doing interviews. Not like he used to. But in his absence, one Trump proxy is all over right-wing media. Surely he can explain all this calmly. Surely he can help take down the heat, to borrow a phrase Trump used in his message to the Justice Department. Look, it starts and ends with Russiagate. Up through the January 6th nonsense, to Ukraine impeachment one, carried out to the Hillary Clinton email investigation scandal, to the Hunter Biden laptop. We have the same rinse, repeat operation by the Democrats or the radical left in the media. The same corrupt FBI government gangsters, the same agents that were involved in Russiagate. They want to hide the corruption of the FBI and DOJ. What the deep state does is they fight back by attacking us personally. And public enemy number one has opened always been Donald Trump. This is what the Mar-a-Lago raid was about. This farcical raid operation that the DOJ and the FBI is running as part of a political operation by the same select few of corrupt politicians who are acting as FBI agents. Wow, that's a cool measured character. Meet Cash Patel, the man making those baseless claims you just heard. He is a former Trump Defense Department official who has been deputized by the former president to be his representative to the National Archives over those missing documents. If Trump is going to battle, this is his star lieutenant. And did you notice this wasn't just one appearance by Patel? It was three different interviews on Fox and Newsmax, all banging the same drum. That is some serious message discipline from Kash Patel. That is also a grand unified theory of all the far-right conspiracy theories, the quantum mechanics of tinfoil hattery when it comes to this Trump document story. Who is this guy, really? And what's a former Pentagon official doing acting as Trump's attack dog in this legally sensitive moment? It all kind of makes sense if you view Kash Patel's Pentagon job and his current role as loyalty rewards for doing Trump's bidding during his term in office. Patel was so involved in Trump's battles with the intelligence community that the Washington Post's David Ignatius wrote, Patel appeared so frequently in so many incarnations that he was almost a zealot figure in President Donald Trump's confrontation against what he imagined as the deep state. Patel doesn't exactly fit the standard mold of a Trump stalwart. He's the ice hockey loving son of Indian immigrants, and he worked for years as a public defender in Miami before joining the Justice Department in 2014. And let's face it, Trump is hard pressed for defense lawyers who will take him on. But hey, now he's got a guy who has defended accused killers, narco traffickers, and financial criminals, helping him fight off the deep state. Patel's political career really took off at the start of the Trump presidency when he became a top staffer on the Republican-led House Intelligence Committee. According to two sources who spoke with David Ignatius, the Justice Department would, la would later investigate whether Patel was leaking classified information that the committee had access to concerning the initial investigation of Trump world contact with Russia. The DOJ has not commented on that publicly. Patel responded to the reporting by Ignatius this week on Newsmax. You know, when the when the Washington Post spends months doing hit pieces on you, and I think this is the second one by that genius journalist over there, yes. you just kind of know you're over the target. Charming. As with most of Trump's inner circle, any sober look at Patel's resume would suggest he was unqualified for his very senior posts in government, especially his final job in the Trump administration, running the day-to-day -day affairs of the Pentagon as chief of staff to acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller. Patel was in that job on January the 6th, and he later told a Vanity Fair reporter that he was in regular contact with then chief of staff at the White House, Mark Meadows, all day. So a pretty crucial figure. Last year, Patel eventually complied with a subpoena to speak with the House January 6th committee. We don't know what Patel told the committee behind closed doors, but what is Patel saying publicly now about how Trump handled January the 6th when he's not talking to congressional investigators? And he says, hey, guys, do we have enough security posture to assist law enforcement? I'm paraphrasing. And he said, as the commander in chief, you have my authorization for up to 20,000 National Guards men and women. Our response to SECDEF and I, roger that, sir. Weird. That's not what the former acting defense secretary Chris Miller told the 1-6 committee, or for that matter, what even Donald Trump initially said. According to Trump, after January the 6th, he said you're going to need 10,000 troops. And according to Chris Miller, even that was said by the president in jest, hyperbolically. And the Pentagon has no record of Trump giving them an order. 
So again, why is Kash Patel the man of the hour to plead Donald Trump's case on TV? Perhaps it's for his ability to spin fantasies to serve Trump's interests. And I don't mean that just as a turn of phrase. I mean it literally. Just look at Kash Patel's children's book. Yes, his children's fiction book titled The Plot Against the King. The picture book uses characters such as King Donald and Hillary Quinton to tell the story behind the Steele dossier and the Russian collusion narrative. I kid you not. Patel even makes himself a wizard in the book, a wizard who proclaims King Donald's innocence to the realm. Who says Republicans want to ban books? Donald Trump says this book should be in every school in America. <sighs> But when Patel's not writing very odd and, dare I say, very sycophantic children's books, he is back to his old tricks on right-wing news running interference for Trump. According to Patel, the Mar-a-Lago raid happened because the feds are trying to block you from seeing the explosive truth. He says Trump had some classified documents from that FBI investigation of Russian contacts, and the raid was to keep him from sharing them with you. There's only one problem with that. The Washington Post and The New York Times this week, citing sources familiar with the investigation, say none of those documents or any other materials pertaining to the Russian investigation were believed to be in the cache of documents recovered by the FBI during the search of Mar-a-Lago. What was in Trump's resort home, according to a letter from the National Archives, was a cache of more than 700 pages of classified documents, including documents related to special access programs, some of the nation's most closely held secrets. But of course, as you heard Kash Patel say earlier, that's just fake news from the radical left of the media. But the problem is that info comes directly from the National Archives in a letter they released this week. But not to worry, Kash Patel has another rather absurd legal argument for you, that Donald Trump can work literal miracles with a wave of his hand. Here he is making that case in two different Fox appearances this month. The president is the sole and universal arbiter and classification authority in the United States of America. President Trump, as a sitting president, is a unilateral authority for declassification. If he says a document is declassified or a set of them, that is it. He can literally stand over a set of documents and say, these are now declassified. He can? I bet he can turn water into wine, too. OK, fine. It's more like how Michael Scott from The Office thinks bankruptcy works. I declare bankruptcy! Unfortunately for Kash Patel, outside experts and other former Trump officials say that's not how declassification works. There still needs to be deliberations and written receipts. Nor does the classification status of any of that material matter to whether he broke the law, as former FBI agent Asha Rangappa told me on this show on Monday. The legal liability that Trump has goes beyond the classified documents. Any yes. official document he has is a stolen government official document and stolen property. So he's on the hook for those. Kash Patel is right in one regard. The Mar-a-Lago raid is like the Clinton emails, the Hunter Biden briefcase, the Russia investigation, the Trump impeachment and the January 6th probe, in the sense that Republican spin masters, right-wing pundits and Trump world diehards like Patel himself have muddied all of these affairs with partisan conspiracy theories and lies. Still. Why am I spending 10 minutes on this guy of all people? You may want to dismiss him as just the latest big talking Trump flack, but for all his lies, all his belligerence, all his children's book fantasies, it's worth remembering that after Donald Trump lost the election in the closing months of 2020, he tried to install Kash Patel as the number two man at the CIA, a move that was averted only when Gina Haspel, the CIA director at the time, threatened to resign. In 2020, we dodged that bullet. But if Trump runs again in 2024 and wins the presidency and seeks to crush all the investigations against him and the people who pursued them, who do you think Donald J. Trump will want to put in charge of the FBI or even the CIA? Yeah, this guy. <laughs>